one of the best dashcam setups ever, got a serious update, and now 4K, quick release and GPS are part of the awesome feature list surrounding the Diddy Pi Mini 5. Good enough? Let's inspect! Hey everyone, how are you doing? Been a while and it's so refreshing to see you around. My name is Michael and I'm always eager to inspect devices that can record footage, therefore dashcams continue to be part of the devices I thoroughly test here. Many of the things I try and check is based on your questions. Now, Diddy Pi, a very weird sounding name for international customers, but that clearly is a name to remember. This here is their old model, which is installed in my wife's car ever since it came out, and it records footage almost every single day. Hot weather, cold winter, it's been there for us with zero problems so far. The only bug I notice is sometimes the voice announcements are stuttering, but the image is not, which is the most important part. Diddy Pi are skipping the generation 4, they go straight to 5 because in China the number 4 brings bad associations, and it's one of the best updates between generations I've ever seen. Hats down to the team that has designed the product, gonna show you all the strengths and also the few minor weaknesses discovered during testing. The price right now is almost twice more expensive than the previous generation, it's around $140. The good news is that a couple of years ago, when Mini 3 was launched, it had almost the same launch price tag. Right now, for $140 you can easily get a dual dashcam setup, but just watch everything I have to show you till the end and you're going to realize that the package here is not just decent, it's really good. Obviously, we can use the word premium when we're unpacking, that's kind of easy to feel even by just unboxing. Of course, during that process, we can figure out how serious the company is about brand identity. We can only praise the good feeling that we get from Diddy Pi Mini 5's package so far. I got the combo with hardware kit, so even before unboxing, I know that the dashcam has a USB Type-C port. Opening the box, and we can read this kind welcome message. We see the cool shape of the Diddy Pi Mini 5, and underneath, the mount, which is just a holder in which we slide the unit. There's a car cigar lighter adapter with just a single USB port, unfortunately, so we can count this as a drawback because it's always nice to have one extra port to charge your smartphone. A long USB cable is included as well. One thing which is pretty obvious is that besides the USB Type-C port and the buttons on the sides, there's nothing else except for the speaker cuts, the microphone hole and the status LEDs. No micro SD card slot, very unusual because most dashcams have such one, but here Diddy Pi give you internally 64 gigs of storage. Before somebody claims it's a risky move and you're doomed to have useless camera in case of a storage failure, let me remind you about the two-year almost everyday service provided by the Mini 3, which has also integrated storage, twice less than the Mini 5 though. I bet this fact alone makes you eager to hear about the rest of the specs. Looks like Diddy Pi are still relying on a high silicon chipset, this time combined with the Sony IMX415 image sensor from the Starvis line, up to 4K maximum resolution, 7-layer lens with f by 1.8 aperture, the mentioned 140 gigs eMMC inbuilt storage, supercapacitor, 24-hour parking surveillance option, inbuilt 5G Wi-Fi, GPS, motion detection, ADAS, and that's most of it. There are plenty of awesome characteristics, so if I've missed something, feel free to add to the list in the comments below. Now, if you're not a techie person or these specs don't mean much to you, I'm gonna be very clear about it. There are a few very, very strong sides about this dashcam. The image sensor by Sony is right now the best that you can get at this price, and the wide aperture glass takes the maximum out of this 1x2.8 inch sensor. I think the footage that you see speaks for itself, and it's remarkable to see such good image quality out of a 4K sensor. The other major strength is the use of a supercapacitor instead of a battery because it makes the device pretty much temperature independent. You can leave the car under direct sunlight in the summer and there's nothing to worry about it. So let us quickly go through the installation and then we're gonna talk more about the footage. I really want to show you the smartphone app as well because it's the most awesome part. So, just find a good spot on the windshield, you will prefer to install it in a place which is not going to disturb you while you're driving. It's all super simple, just make sure to stamp the holder. As usual, I use a cheap screen folio as a layer between this and the glass. Good news is that the adhesive for the holder seems to have a pull tab, but I still prefer to have a folio in between because it's much easier to detach should you decide to move the dashcam to another car. Last comes the cable, which you need to discreetly bring to the car cigar light USB charger, or alternatively you can use a hardwire kit. If you decide to go for such a kit, it's pretty easy to install. You need to find the ground, the ACC and the VCC source, and they can be easily detected with a multimeter. 
Most car alarm or car audio centers should be able to quickly help you with that, or just Google around, there are quite many resources to be found these days. The advantage of a hardwire kit is that you're gonna have 24-7 surveillance of the car, there's also under-voltage protection for the dashcam in case you're worried about your car's battery life. So, now the setup. Well, you can use the defaults or you can use the smartphone app in order to customize. One of the best smartphone apps I've ever used, so good looking and functional. Now, this is something you should really see. Pretty unique feature in my opinion. While you clearly have visibility over the GPS track, the speed and so on, there's this awesome chart about the G-Force. Just imagine how useful this feature is about proving that you have actually initiated braking on time in case of an accident or something similar. I'm such a fan of this option ever since I saw it with the DDP Mini 3. Also, the timeline is a bit different. While most dash cams rely on separate video cuts, we still keep the files in chunks here, but the app can recognize them as uninterrupted timeline, so you can easily go into the timeline section and select the exact part of the track that you need to download. This is a lot more meaningful approach as compared to the other dashcam softwares. Of course, settings and other config options are available too, and good moment to underline that the more effective H.265 compression is available, meaning that you can count on files with smaller size and still some great quality. I've intentionally left my comments about the footage quality for the end, because part of the plan is to let you build up your own mind. And I think it's far to find any weaknesses. Sharpness, of course, is a bit more aggressive than a regular camera, because we want to be able to see as many details as possible. Good saturation, good contrast, plenty of things to see, and you can zoom in in 4K and there still is a great amount of details. I think you can now realize why I praise the image quality so much. While you're driving, you will also notice that there's an option for ADAS, warning you in case you're about to leave the lane, or in case there's a car in front of you. Too close to front car. This implementation would be a lot better if it's factory integrated with the car, so with dash cams, I've always considered ADAS to be a rather marketing gimmick. Our usual audio test, and if you wonder what's the quality of the microphone of the DD Pi Mini 5, that's how about it sounds as it records the internals of the car with a speed of around 50 km per hour. Now, the few minor drawbacks that I've discovered. The voice announcements are not that great. Maybe another voice pack option could be a nice addition. The Wi-Fi seems to be only 5G by default, so if you have a phone working at 2.4 GHz only, might be a challenge to use the app. There's only one USB port on the original charger, and also the adhesive tape here is weirdly white, which is a very strange decision and makes the DD Pi Mini 5 too obvious on the windshield. But you can easily replace it for black adhesive tape, bought from the local tools shop. Despite these minor imperfections, there's only one word I can use. Outstanding! It's so good that now I only wish to see an option for a rear module and this will immediately become my primary dashcam. The awesome time-lapse feature for parking mode, the so many great extras, the inbuilt storage, the super easy way to detach, the super image quality, the discrete design, the super capacitor, the cool features in the smartphone app. I mean, it's remarkable how close to perfection the DDP Mini 5 is, and I can totally confirm that it's my absolute favorite from all the 4K dashcams so far. But let me see if there's somebody else that thinks otherwise. Would love to hear from you in the comments below the video. Do you consider the DDP Mini 5 as such a good car DVR? Or you do have some other suggestions? Let me know, and I'd love to further talk about the topic. A link to the device with a modest discount is, as usual, available in the description below the video. I kindly ask you to support the channel in any way you can, because it's now more important to me than ever. Show me that you appreciate the hard work that we do here, and thank you so much for stopping by to watch this review. My name is Michael, it's been such a pleasure to meet you today. Hope to see you becoming a subscriber, and wish you a fantastic day. Bye!